Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. My name is Sam and I'm with the customer success team here at Big Time. And the goal of today's webinar is to get you familiar with some of the features that are available in the Premier version of Big Time IQ with a focus on resource allocation. We will also cover allocation reports, projecting revenue, custom cost rates, and multi-level review and approvals which are all features available only with IQ Premier. So to begin, what is resource allocation? Resource allocation allows you to plan for future work by allocating your staff to specific projects and tasks. You can allocate budgets weekly or monthly, and this can now be edited at the project level. You'll also be able to see which staffers are being over or underutilized and be able to make informed decisions to adjust hours accordingly. Resource allocation also allows you to anticipate monthly revenue for your T&M projects based on your staffers hourly bill rates and also your fixed fee projects based on the fixed amount set to be billed to the client. So, to set up your allocations, first we'll navigate here to my company and client list. And just a note here, depending on the verbiage in your own site, this could be project list, engagement list, and that just depends on how you set up your lexicon when you first created your big time site. But for me, it's called the client list. Then let's click into one of my clients here. So I'll just use Burnham CPA as an example. And then let's click into the tasks tab. Once again, this is another one of those points where your verbiage may be different. Instead of tasks, you might have phases or to do's or engagements. And here you can see that I have a few tasks set up such as management consulting, general tax prep audit and returns. So tasks are key to budgeting and they're also key to setting up your allocations since allocations are driven entirely by tasks because you're allocating staffers to projects but also to specific tasks on an hourly basis. So if we click into the allocations tab here, we can kind of take a look at what I mean. So these are some graphs that give you a general overview of where you're at budget-wise versus the amount of hours that you actually allocated. So on the left-hand side, you can see the remaining budget, actuals on the bar graph, budget versus actuals, key members that I have set up here for this project, which are just the staffers that have the most hours allocated. And then below, you can see budget versus actuals over time in graph form. So to actually set these allocations up, however, we'll click down below to edit allocation. And here you can see right now I'm in the task view. So I've got the task name in green. I've got the budgeted amount of hours that I've set for this task right next to it. So 200 hours you can see there. You can see the due date. And all the way to the right, you can see the amount of hours that I have allocated currently for this task. If I do go over the amount of hours that I initially budgeted, that allocated amount will turn red. So let's just enter 200 hours here and you can see that turn red. Okay, so from each of these dropdowns, you would first choose your staffer or you could also allocate to a specific role. So if you'd rather allocate by role instead of an individual staffer, you have that option available as well. And you also have the option, as I mentioned earlier, of allocating time weekly or monthly. And that is controlled here on the left-hand side in this sidebar. And you can change that setting as well. I'm just gonna change that back to weekly here for our purposes. If you check the box to show actual hours, that will show all of the input hours for the given period. And you can also compare with a baseline as well. So a baseline is basically a set of allocation numbers 
that you can compare future allocations against. So for example, if I wanted the current allocations here to be my baseline that I compare against moving forward, then I would just hit create baseline in the bottom right, click yes to update, that would overwrite any existing baseline that I have saved. And moving forward, if I check compare with baseline again on the left, now I can see my current numbers compared to the baseline below. And these are obviously the exact same numbers because this is the baseline I just created. You can use the arrows above to jump backwards or forwards in time. And you can also turn on autosave. So if you're entering a bunch of allocations at a time and you don't want any of your data that you've entered to be lost in the case of an internet outage or an accidental refresh, then you should make sure to turn that autosave feature on. If I click into the view by staff member here up top, these are the same exact allocations, just a different view. So now instead of the task name in green, I can see each of the staffers name he, names here, such as Jeff, Nancy, and myself, how many hours I have for the given period in terms of capacity. So that's 40 hours a week based on my monthly capacity of 160, and that's set at the staff list. And then instead of choosing a staffer here, you would choose the task that you want to allocate hours for that staffer to. Okay, if I go ahead and click shift here below, I can also shift my allocations over a week. So you can see the seven hours here shifting and I can shift them back by clicking the left arrows there. All right, so once you hit save here on this screen, you'll be presented with a few options. First, you have the option to update task assignments. So it, this will essentially replace your existing task assignments with whoever you have time allocated for currently. One note about that, that the system does warn you about as well, is that if you do have existing task assignments, it will replace those with whoever you've allocated time for currently for this project. On the other hand, the option update the client team, that will simply add any staffers that you've allocated time for to the client or project team. That won't replace your current team, however. And update hourly budgets. If you have an hourly budget set at the task level, it will replace that number with the amount of hours that you have allocated for each task. Then finally, below here, the revenue recognition model. This is basically asking you if this project is billed hourly or at a fixed fee. And that will tie directly into your revenue projections when it comes to allocation reports. So for this project, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as fixed fee and that will come into play once you look at the allocation reports. And I'll just go ahead and click these boxes here as well. Okay, so now if we go into the editor here, you can see the assignments that have been updated since I checked the box to update task assignments. And if I go back and look at the team here, you can see the staffers that I allocated time for to this project all are on the project team here now. Okay, so we took a look briefly at the allocation graphs here. So this kind of gives you just an overall view of your budgeted amount versus your actuals. Another really useful place to look at your allocation data is the utilization dashboard. So if we go up top to reports and then utilization dashboard, here you can see your allocated input and billable utilization based on your capacity for a given date range. So right now we're simply looking at Q1 of 2019. 
If I wanted to narrow this down to a specific month or let's just say January and February, I can check the boxes there and you can see all the numbers update below. If you click into a staffer's name, you can see the detail. So you can see that Jeff has 28 hours allocated for the GM client, 31 hours actually input for that client, and all 31.25 hours are billable. If you click into the allocated amount of hours, that will actually take you to the allocation editor for that client, which is pretty useful, and you can edit those allocations from here. And if you click into the input or billable amount of hours, it will run a quick report that will give you the time detail for that period. On the left-hand side, you can change the date range up top. You can also change the cost center filters. So if you're utilizing cost centers at the staff or client level, you can filter by any of the three cost centers that you have set up. And this is another point where your cost centers may differ from mine. So I have service client type and client status. Yours could be location and service offering, for example, and you might have one that just says NA. Those can be customized from my company, my company, and the lexicon here. So just a tip there, if you want to edit your cost centers, here's where you can edit the verbiage on those, as well as your billing rates and your verbiage across your big time site as well. So if you wanted to call your projects jobs, for example, or your tasks phases, you can change that wording here. Okay, you have some other filtering options here on the left-hand side as well to show non-billable clients, to select only specific clients. Right now I'm only looking at the GM client there. And then below you have your staff cost center filters. So whereas above we have the client cost center filters, below are the same filters, but at the staff level. And then finally below you can filter by specific staffers. Up in the top right, you can also change how you're grouping. So right now we're grouping by department. I don't use departments in my site, so everyone is unassigned. And then the other options that you have there are based on those cost centers once again. Okay, so this is the second place that you can turn to to look for allocation data along with the allocation graphs. The next place and probably the most detailed place would be the allocation reports. So if we go up top to reports and report center, we can take a look at a couple of reports that we have here specifically for allocations. So to start, let's look at the allocation by month and staffer with projections report that I've created here. So this is a pretty straightforward report. I've got the allocated amount of hours by staffer, by client, the input amount, and the projected revenue, which once again is based on the revenue recognition model that was chosen at the client level. So for my fixed fee projects, that will just be broken out on a percentage of the amount of hours that I have allocated for that project. And for my TNM projects, that will simply be the allocated hours multiplied by the billing rate for projected revenue. So one note here with your allocation reports, these projected revenue columns are not on any of the standard allocation reports by default, you do have to add those manually. So let's just take a look at how to do that. So I started here with the allocation by month and staffer report. And as you can see, it goes months in advance. So the first thing I did was click customize, create a copy since that's a default report. I got rid of a few of these monthly columns because I only wanted to see three months out at a time. 
So I'll just finish removing all of these except for month one, two, and three. Then I went in and I added the input amount of hours and then also the allocated fees, which are the projected revenue columns. And that's what that little pop-up window lets you know on the right-hand side. What I also did was I activated column groups up top. And what I can do now with that is basically group my three allocated columns together. So now I have allocated up top here. I can hit save and now I can stretch this column header across my three allocated columns. I can do the same for input. And the same for projected revenue since all three of these columns tie into that same group of projected revenue. So that would be the quick way to create that report. That's just one of the reports that we have for allocations. Another one is the allocation detail simple. So this simply gives you for each staffer job and task for the given period, how many hours have been allocated, how many have actually been input, and what the ratio of input versus allocated is in terms of a percentage. So for example, you can see here for the month of January, I've got five hours allocated, 10 were actually input, so I'm 200% above what I initially projected. Okay, so that's a broad overview of the resource allocation feature. Another feature that is only available in the Premier version of Big Time IQ is the custom cost rates. So if we navigate here to the rates tab within one of my clients, first uh, you can see the bill rates tab, which everyone has access to. Then you click into the cost rates. So cost, custom cost rates function pretty much the same as custom bill rates. You can basically say when I work on, let's say analysis, I get paid let's say $60 an hour. And that custom cost rate will override whatever cost rate is entered under my name in the staff list. So as with custom bill rates, custom cost rates always override the staffer's default cost rate. And you can also get as specific as you'd like. So you can see here I, cho I chose a staffer and a category. I could just leave category and task blank. And if I do that, then that would mean Whenever I log any time to this client, this is my cost rate. This is what I'm being paid. Reapply rates here would reapply the current cost rates that you have entered on this page to all submitted and unbilled time entries. So that's kind of similar to that update rates button that you can find from the invoicing overview page. And if you have a custom cost rate that will go into effect at a future date, you can set that future date here in this effective date column. All right, another feature that we have available in the Premier version of IQ is multi-level approvals. So if we take a look here, you can see I can have up to three levels of timesheet review. So you have the same options that you would have on each level, but now you can break it out in up to three different tiers. So for example, the way you can have that work is, let's say first whoever's marked as the team lead 
on a project or client will be the first approver. Then the timesheet will go to the staffer's manager, whoever is the manager of the staffer's department, they have to sign off. And then finally, before the time is fully approved, let's say I myself am the final approver for all time. So you can have up to three levels, or you can just have two. You can put none as the final approver, and then the secondary approver will be the final approver. And you have the same option here for expenses. And as far as invoice review and approval, you get four levels instead of the standard two that come with the pro version of Big Time IQ. We also have a integration with Salesforce that is available only for our premier customers. So the way that that works, just a broad overview, basically you're able to choose a stage that your opportunities will automatically generate big time projects. And from there, what we'll go over into Salesforce from big time will be your project status information, team info, budget information, invoice, and also a monthly activity summary of time and expenses. And lastly, as a premier customer, you would also have access to priority support, meaning that all calls and emails from priority customers would take precedent over standard support cases, meaning that they would go to the top of the support queue. All right, so that about wraps up this video on the premier features of Big Time IQ. If you are interested in trying out the premier version or possibly getting a demo, feel free to send in an email to sales at bigtime.net or go ahead and give us a call at 312-346-4646, option two. Thanks everyone for tuning in and have a great rest of your day.